that sad tangle of alleys north of Cortland Street, EC1, all corners and shadows, shadows and corners, that's where I am right now. I'm in a hurry. <laughs> I see an ID card that someone's dropped and I think, who cares? Not my problem. I'm in a hurry. But I pick it up anyway. Somebody's work ID card. Alistair McKenzie, it says. Deputy Workforce Administrator at FSL. Who's Alistair McKenzie? Who's FSL? What's a Deputy Workforce Administrator? Never mind. <laughs> Look at Mr McKenzie. Brown face, brisk beard, short grey hair. How old would you say? 50? Perhaps. Kids? Yeah, yeah. Two, maybe three. A lovely loyal wife who, bless her, has stuck with him through thick and thin. <laughs> Brochure fresh house in Essex, Kent, Surrey. Football. Mow the lawn. Have a barbecue. Nice fat silver car. Black car, blue car. Slouching on the gravel. Everything available, everything blatant and raw, like pornography or boxing. Like I said, I'm in a hurry. I'm a busy man. So I slip the ID card in my inside pocket next to my phone and I stride off. Look at me striding. <laughs> but before I can get to Sainsbury's, I see a white plaque next to a pair of large dark doors on my left, just at the watery edges of my eyes. That's where the demons live, my mum used to say. Now go back to sleep. FSL, just that, nothing more. Three plain, sans serif, navy blue, capital letters F and S and L. Serious lettering for a serious business, mark my words. Beneath the plaque is a little black access control panel with one real light, blinking patiently, waiting. Perfect. All I have to do is go inside and hand it over and that's my good deed done for the day. Who decides what's a good deed? I must have walked past this place a million times before and never noticed it. London's like that. After a while, you just don't see it anymore. You don't see it until it changes. Where's, where's that building gone? I wonder where she is now. I put Alistair's card up against the panel. And yes, the red light turns to green. And there's a wonderfully satisfying beep that I had hardly dared hope for. Breathless, weightless, I need to behave as if I belong here. I, I do belong here. After all, I've got an ID card. Try and stop me. Well, all right, but what do I do now? When I've done that, what do I do next? Where am I supposed to go? And what if Alistair McKenzie is here in the building, even as we speak? And what if he's talking to security? reporting the loss of his ID card or what if security are monitoring the CCTV situation and, and, and pointing at the screens and then looking at each other and back at the screens. Intruder, level zero, code red. But it doesn't happen. Nothing happens. Where do assistant workforce administrators work? Third floor? Nineteenth floor? I walk into the lift and press three. Everything on the floor, everything on the third floor is glass and metal and nice pale wooden panels and corporate art brought by the square yard. There are plants that nobody waters, but they never die. You know the sort of shit. There are people sitting at desks, someone rushing past with a laptop in his hand. Better get a move on with that, they might need it right away. And then the 
there's a blue water cooler plastic upside down so blue so cold I approach an empty desk monitor mouse keyboard telephone pink post-it pad some pens in a pot too many peas not my fault I sit down the chair sighs a welcoming sigh yes it's me Alistair Mackenzie <laughs> Alistair Al Mac Ken Ken from Mackenzie no that's not working stick with Al you can call me Al <laughs> rise with pal <laughs> sounds good I like it the phone rings I pick it up say hello with a question mark at the end woman who answers addresses me as Alistair asks me something about a problem she's having and could I assist and I was so helpful with that thing before <laughs> we both laugh enjoying remembering oh yes that thing before <laughs> what was it that thing before phone down again try to look busy I shall probably log into Alistair's computer get some work done what's his password how should I know perhaps I can guess but this isn't a film where passwords are guessable in approximately eight seconds <laughs> by the quick super quick-witted superhero <laughs> who can use his fists the way he can use his brain perhaps Alistair Mackenzie wrote it on a pink post-it note and stuck it under his desk I crouched down to have a look nothing I open a desk drawer some pens a book of stamps some keys paper clips and a USB stick and a rubber band I pull the drawer as far as it will go and there I see it not on a pink post-it no but on a yellow one a taste of cough syrup in my mouth because we used to use a plastic spoon exactly that same color yellow 40 years ago I type in the password and hold my breath please be right <laughs> and I'm in I open my emails not my emails Al's emails I read a few standard stuff meetings appointments targets I send an email to myself and shiver when my phone shivers in my pocket while pretending to be busy, I glance around at my colleagues at the open plan office, at the windows letting in the dark light, <laughs> at the notice board, and all the monitors and printers and cupboards and signs on the doors and on the walls. Everything looks just as busy as... Everyone looks just as busy as me. Are all these people actually who they say they are? How can I be sure? How can they be sure? I write a few emails, open a few spreadsheets, answer a few calls. Christ, is that the time? Some of my colleagues are already packing up, squeezing into coats, packing backpacks. Colleagues, well, <laughs> I can't call them friends. Not yet. I get up walk to the lift, go down, ground floor, out of the building. At the station I look up at the notice board like someone in a Spielberg movie. Awesome. All the destinations and the times and the platforms and the delays. Where does Alistair Mackenzie live? I squeeze onto the train, stand next to him or all the others look at them, the women in their short skirts and black tights, the men in their grey jackets and their grey trousers, everyone with headphones and phones, shoes and bags and newspapers, Instagram, Twitter, WhatsApp, and the next stop is, the next stop is, the next stop Right in the train, very dark outside, just white lights and orange lights and houses.
backing onto railway lines. Some of them you can see into the tiny kitchen and the living room for a moment as the train rattles past. Whose lives are these? Yours? Mine? I get off at a station I've never heard of. I walk along, down a road, and another road, another road, another. The next house is mine, the next house, the next house. Hedges, wheelie bins, trees, lights, lights behind trees, road, avenue, crescent, the kind of place you'd expect to see in a film. And then just as I, just as I have thought, a slim fox trots across my path a hundred yards ahead, disappears again. It was definitely there though. I saw it with my own eyes. You have to believe me. Quiet, dead end street. Nice houses all in a row. Not old houses really, just pretending to be old. The windows of Mr Mackenzie's house. Downstairs and upstairs. They're all ablaze with lights. Expectant, hopeful. I walk past the car, which is exactly as I knew it would be. And knock on the door, which is exactly as I knew it would be. Brief burst of panic, weakness. That's all, fight it. Fight it. Indistinct voices behind the door, the family getting ready to welcome me in. In from the cold, moonless night time. I take one last look around at the bright dark street and the entire glimmering world on standby, awaiting further instructions. <laughs>